Okay, so we've got our ring, and it's got seven facets. We're going to talk about how to get a little fancy here and make a channel ring with the CAD we already have. First thing we're going to do is go back to a uniform number of facets, so 64 is fine. And then we're going to make a new module, right? Module, channel ring. Okay, and then we're going to pass it some information. Open and close parentheses and then a curly brace. That's to start our module. And then we're going to call the function channel ring. Just to make sure our code still works. Okay, so nothing has happened, but let's let's just check. Okay. Let's go back to five sides. Okay, so we do know that the function still works. And now we can pass a different set of information to ring blank from channel ring, which is going to be our width, our ring size, our thickness, and the last one will be the resolution. Okay. And then we can take that same information set and we can set it so we keep track of it that it's 7, 19, 4, and 64, okay? From there, we can get rid of all these numbers and replace them with width, ring size, thickness, and rest. Now, here's the fun part. What we can do now is decide that our ring should actually be larger than what it is, and then subtract a different ring blank from it. So we're going to start commenting our code so we know what's going on. This is the base ring. Okay. And the computer is not going to understand what that means, so you can use backslash to comment that out so you can read what you're writing. And then do another one that says, this one cuts the channel of the ring. And the more detailed your comments, the easier it is for other people to understand what your code does. So now we can take our same ring blank, right? copy and paste, go below, and we're going to say that the ring size is actually plus thickness. And our thickness here is actually thickness over 2, so half the thickness. And if we compile this correctly, we should get another ring. And so you can see here, this is our core ring. It is inside. And then this is our outer ring here. We can ghost that with the percent function. And that is the outside. So this is close, except we want to cut one ring from the other. So we need to import another difference function. Difference, open close uh, parentheses, curly brace, and then a closing curly brace. You've got to remember to indent, not because it's required, but because it's easier to read your code when you know that you're inset. So technically, uh, difference should also be inset. And control I, there we go. That's proper formatting. And now from here, we're going to look at the base function and it's just cutting it away. So what we need to change is actually the width of the ring needs to be some other size. So width minus thickness over two should work. Let's see what we've got here. So our band ring is there, but it's just a little bit too large. So we want it to be thickness over two perhaps. And then we're going to add just a small fraction of a number to make sure that it sticks proud of the surface. And there we have our channel ring. Okay. And so we could pass all of these dimensions uh, as we have them here. And let's just say instead of width being 7, we're going to make it a little bolder. How about this is a, a 9 millimeter wide ring. And then we'll go with... Um, maybe a 17 diameter band, 
and a thickness uh, of, of four. Well, let's go with five. And we'll stick with a nice resolution, which is uh, growth of hunter. And there is our channel and ring parametrically. Okay, so technically this ring demonstration, this ring demonstration, demonstration is mark two. And so we would save this file as mark two, and we want to comment that out. And uh, we're going to call this a channel ring. Okay. So file, save as, ring demo, mark two. 